Episode 2 of House of the Dragon brings us a unique gift. No, not a dragon egg spiral tossed like a football. My dear people of the realm, we have a new opening sequence, and I'm going to break down exactly what it means because while there are similarities with Game of Thrones' iconic clockwork intro, the storytelling here is completely different. The intro sequence was not included in review episodes sent to the press. This was a surprise everyone got to experience together. Wondering, would Raymond Jawadi's theme get tweaked or replaced? Hard no! The striking minor key fantasy theme remains because HBO knows what the people want. But everything else in the intro is different. While Game of Thrones intro laid out a map of Westeros to help viewers understand the realm and its great houses, House of the Dragon is focusing on one thing and one thing only, the House of the Dragon. Before we get any further, small reminder, there will be spoilers for the end of this episode of House of the Dragon. Yup, if you know how to read it, which you will, the opening credits spoil the final reveal, and we're going to show you how. Alright, here we go. Dracarys. <laughs> Other houses like the Baratheons or the Lannisters are not represented in this model that looks like King Viserys' favorite Warhammer kid of old Valyria, only the main Targaryen line. We are following the history of rulers and succession, which is the primary narrative of this show. Only people involved in that muddled Targaryen descendancy for the throne will get a marker, which is potentially why this opening is much more indirect than, say, clearly the Stark family in clearly the North. What we're looking at is essentially a Targaryen family tree starting here at the Doom of Old Valyria. We still don't know what really happened, but we can assume something akin to Pompeii and somehow involving dragons. Then there's the Targaryen rule over Westeros. This first crown sigil rising as Valyria falls symbolizes Aegon the Conqueror, who first united the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros some 300 years before Daenerys Targaryen and A Song of Ice and Fire. Anyway, Aegon's sigil then sinks into blood. As a rule going forward, any sigil submerged in the blood is considered dead, and any sigil above the blood is a still living person. The blood drips from Aegon to his two queens, not at the same time, don't be weird, his sister wife Visenya Targaryen and his other sister wife Rhaenys Targaryen. Rhaenys gets more focus because she's the one to produce Aegon's heir, Aenys, the next cog on the board. But what's this other blood drip coming from the other side? Down a little further, we have one cog sort of getting hurried through here under this wooden structure. The king after Aenys, his half-brother, Aegon and Visenya's son, Maegor the Cruel. Remember him? Bad guy. That's probably why he's getting rushed and hidden. It's a whole thing and doesn't pertain to current succession, especially with the next king being Aenys' true-born son, but it happened. There you go. This takes us to a solid ruler who we've actually met on the show, Jaehaerys Targaryen, the Old King. He was in the first scene of the series at the Great Council at Harrenhal to name Viserys I his heir. Jaehaerys and his queen Alysanne produce nine children, so this branching liquid blood tree is fairly easy to recognize among all the other arteries, the uh, streams here. We skip seven of the children's lines and flow down to Jaehaerys' son Balon and his sister wife Alyssa next. Let's pause a bit. We know historically Balon was not king, nor Jaehaerys' first son and heir apparent. That would have been Aemon, father of Rhaenys, the queen who never was. But as we know, Balon and Aemon both perished, which caused the question of succession to become an issue for the Great Council in the first place. Since Viserys won that title, we follow his father Balon's line, not Aemon's. However, Rhaenys is depicted, along with her husband Corlys Valerion, as represented by this ocean blue cog. Their line kind of dribbles off because it's not the one we're following. Sorry, Lena, you will not be the 12-year-old wife of the much older king. Actually, good for you. Anyway, rewind a few seconds here, and we can also barely make out Damon's representative mark. But again, Damon's not the line we're following now. This is all a little disrespectful to the so-called spares, but I digress. Finally, we make our way to current ruler King Viserys I here, with Queen Emma represented by his side and as deceased as of last episode. Now before we go where we think the line of succession is supposed to go next, we're taking a little stop at these two cogs. 
This is the spoiler I was mentioning. This upper left-hand cog is Otto Hightower, not directly part of the bloodline, and the lower is his child, Alison Hightower, who Viserys announced as his intended second wife at the end of episode two, when the House of the Dragon show intro debuts. The blood flows toward her, but doesn't flow through her because she hasn't had a child with Viserys, which ha <laughs> ha ha! Yeah, we'll see how long that lasts. Back on track, we move to Viserys' announced heir, who the realm bent the knee to, Rhaenyra. Her marker is easily identifiable as the same interlocked design on the Valyrian steel necklace Daemon gifted her in episode one. And that's it, for now. Readers of Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin know this is going to shift dramatically as people get married, have children, and die. As I alluded to, these changes could happen quickly, possibly as soon as episode three, so don't skip the intro and keep an eye on where the blood flows every episode. While we don't have Game of Thrones' map of Westeros to help us keep track of where everyone is, House of the Dragon's Targaryen blood tree of succession will keep us on top of who's in the running for the Iron Throne. Thanks for watching, I'm Kim Horcher, and for more Fire and Blood, here's why a certain Targaryen secret changes everything we know about Game of Thrones. And don't forget to follow and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch. If you wish to be restored as heir, you'll need to kill me. So do it.